Today, we are going to delve within the mysteries of the sign of cancer. The constellation of cancer related with our sequence of lectures of uh, esoteric astrology. <coughs> Cancer is the sign related with the scarab. The famous symbol of the soul among the Egyptians. Commonly, you find the symbol of the crab within that uh, sign which is also we will say an insect from the sea insects uh, characterize themselves by because they don't have a skeleton but that uh, exo skeleton, which is outside. I mean, this is covered, as you know, because we have a skeleton inside, but the insects have it outside. And uh, it is a sign governed by the moon, related with the thymus gland. When we enter into the studies of endocrinology, we discover that the thymus gland is that gland that uh, starts its functions specifically during the infancy, during seven years, according with the cycle of the planets. And with the law of the Epta Parapashinok, which is the law of seven, the law that organizes. So, our immune system in the physical body has. Uh, among the glands and the system organs, the thymus gland as a main gland that uh, provides the T cells which help to fight the different bacteria, viruses, sicknesses that eventually will enter into the physical body. It is uh, astonishing to see and to study the thymus gland in relation with the soul. All souls enter into the physical world through the constellation of cancer. Because <coughs> if we study Kabbalah, we discover that Yesod, the ninth sphere, is governed by the moon. It is related with the waters with the ethereal world or what we call the ethereal body. When we study the human being, we discover that the true human being has seven bodies. 
the second, counting these bodies from the bottom, is the vital body, called ethereal body, which is represented in the tree of life by the Sephira Yesod. And Malkut is the physical body. Of course, we know that the tree of life is related with the macrocosmos and the microcosmos. Malkut will be the earth in the macrocosmos and Yesod will be the moon. So behold here why we state that everybody enters through the constellation of cancer into the physical body. Whatever our sign of birth will be. Because forcefully the soul has to pass through your sword in order to enter into the physical body. That's why the thymus gland is that very important gland that in the childhood enters into activity in order to provide to the physical body of that newborn the necessary defenses for his future life, physical life. The thymus gland related with the moon bring us into our mind the soul which is submitted to the mechanicity of nature. Within us we have that scarab which is the symbol of the soul, the buddhata, that the former speaker described uh, and explained in the former lecture with many details. That buddhata, that essence, which is part of the monad, of the spirit, is represented by that scarab, the Egyptian scarab. When we see that scarab we see that the Egyptians associated with the sun. Here in astrology, we see clear that the scarab associated with the sun is precisely that soul that enters into the body and which begins its functionings in the physical body with these two glands. Because the thymus gland is precisely above, behind the heart, between the lungs. The hormones, the energies of the thymus gland work in relation with the sexual glands during childhood. It is... Uh, known that the uh, thymus gland helps or works on the development of the sexual glands in both sexes. When we study the thymus gland in women, we see that this gland is associated, related with the mammary glands. Then now we can understand why the child needs to drink his mother milk. His mother's milk in childhood. Because that milk, that liquid, that fluid that uh, emerges from the breast of women are in direct relation with the thymus gland and with the moon, with the vitality of the forces of the cosmos, 
that the child needs in order to develop a strong, vital body. This is uh, one of the main motives why mother's milk cannot be substituted by a cow milk or any type of substance. Even though in different type of uh, substances that substitute the mother's milk, you can find those proteins and vitamins, but not, we will say, the tatwick substance that the thymus gland subtracts from the ethereal body and that places in the milk of the woman in order to nurture that little body that begins to grow and to develop that immune system that we need in order to survive, especially in this time, in this day and age, where viruses, sicknesses are spread all over the world. <coughs> As uh, we are explaining this and repeat, that those hormones of the thymus gland exert influence in the development of the sexual glands. The testicles in the ovaries gives a uh, the necessary vital forces, substances, in order for the body to develop that immune system, that strength. And uh, this is why, uh, if you observed, how the sexual glands are related with the thymus gland, it is stated that when the physical body enters into its maturity, the thymal glands degenerate. And this is because of the abuse of the sexual energy. In ancient times, Egyptians knew about the sexual force. And many of the esoteric religions of the world that study the sexual force, know very well that uh, those individuals that transmute their sexual energy can acquire a hyperfunctioning of the thymus gland and to acquire uh, immortality, that which people call the elixir of longevity, that elixir of long life in the physical body. In this day and age, people abuse of the sexual energy. This is why the thymus gland is degenerated. But in Gnosticism, we teach sexual transmutation, which in the child is natural. Because when you see a baby, you see how uh, his sexual energy works together with the forces of uh, his or her mother. You see, for instance, in the activity of uh, uh, the mother feeding her baby, a sexual activity related with love. Remember that the thymus gland is above the heart. When the mother is giving her milk to her child, is really feeding not only the physical body, but his soul and beyond. But love that the mother feels in her heart, associated with the thymus gland and with her breast, really gives a lot. Not only in the physical body, but in the internal soul as moral principles, vital principles that the, ma the macrocosmos places through the moon, through that milk, into the soul of that baby. That scarab, especially that soul that we are talking here, 
It's just a symbol of the soul. And why the scar is associated with the soul? Or the immortality of the soul? Because in the beginning, when we enter into this planetary body, we are associated with the mechanical laws of nature. And the soul is associated with what we call the tritocosmos. The tritocosmos, the very tiny cosmos, in which the soul can develop. When we talk about the tritocosmos, most of the time we associate that with the hell, with the infernos, with the inferior dimensions of nature. But that tiny cosmos in this other aspect related with the insects. Because when we study the, micro, the tritocosmos, we study that it's associated with hell and with insects. And then we discover why, in ancient times, many religions were associated certain insects with the soul. The soul that is entangled in the mechanicity of nature and that eventually should leave that mechanicity in order to enter into the superior worlds. We will say, in order to become a microcosmos, a human being that will enter into the superior cosmos. But before we do that, <coughs> we are submitted to that mechanicity of the trito, which is below, or behind the mesocosmos, which is the planet Earth. You see, for instance, that... Uh, In childhood, everybody likes to hear about uh, fairy tales. All children, all children like to hear that. It is uh, due to the fact that when the, we are at that age, all the chakras that people in this present time are trying to develop in order to see the ultra of nature, are naturally developed in any newborn. Any newborn is clairvoyant, clairaudient, and sees beyond this three-dimensional world. The activity of the seven chakras in the scarab, and that embryo of soul with a new body is something very normal. Unfortunately, from the zero to the seven years in childhood, that scarab, that embryo of soul, develops his personality you know, this word personality comes from uh, Latin, personae, which means mask. Or we will say a shield. Like the scarab needs in order to protect that consciousness, protect himself, the soul, against the exterior world which is this society, this materialistic world in which we live. We stated that, uh, in other lectures, that uh, personality is developed based on three factors. Genotype, phenotype, and paratype. <coughs> Genotype is related with genes. When we investigate the new body of that newborn, we discover that this body is called organism because it is a compound of organs, different organs. It's the human organism. 
Each organ is a compound of cells. Each cell is a compound of molecules. And each molecule is a compound of atoms. And if we destroy an atom, we liberate energy. So see, hey, see how the physical body in the last synthesis is just a compact energy. But when we discover the cell, which is the element which all the organs are formed, we discover that the center, the nucleus of the cell, is for more or less about 100 or more chromosomes. And each chromosome, but genes. The genes are precisely that uh, element which is between the physical world and the internal world. That is the genotype. With the internal worlds, we find that uh, genotype or that inheritance. The inheritance that that scarab, that that child brings into his new physical body that nature is given to him. Free. In order to develop that personality, that shield of protection for that soul, it has to be uh, in accordance with the law of karma. Of course, the law of karma, cause and effect, teaches that that scarab, before entering into this new body, was having another body, or had another body, in other times. When I say this, it comes into my mind that insect called cicada, which in summer, in the tropical, I don't know in here also in this area, but uh, that cicada emits a chirping sound continuously during summertime. Ship, ship, like, not, not like a cricket, but more, more fine, more sharp. There exists the belief among people, of the belief, that when this uh, uh, insect finishes his chirping, it's because it exploded and dies. But this is not true. What happened is that because of this sound, this vibration, the insect is creating a new body within that body. And the chirping and chirping and chirping of that sound is opening his back, the back of that uh, insect, until it completely open and a new body is emerging from that carcass. It's like uh, a similar, in, like similar with what the snake does. So that is that is immortal. When people find the old carcass, they say, oh, it, it died, it exploded. But they don't know that a new body emerged from that and just left the carcass there, the, the skin. And that's why this activity of this scarab is precisely with the ancient Egyptian soul in order to symbolize the soul. Like when the soul leaves the old body, creates a new one, and start doing the same thing, chirping again, in a new one, and again, and again, and again. So that's what happens precisely with the new body, or the new personality that we're explaining here, that the child has to, be, uh, to build in accordance with the law of karma, cause and effect. So through the genes, those elements that we call psychological aggregates, which belong to that soul, will channel the energies that that body needs in order to build that personality. 
because that newborn baby needs to uh, incarnate the rest of itself. With this, we are stating here that we are divided in two. Or this soul is divided in two. Three percent of that soul is that innocent element that we see in a newborn. But the 97%, the rest of that soul, of that consciousness, is that which cannot enter into the newborn baby because needs the personality which is associated with it in order to express itself through the newborn baby. Which... It takes about seven years in order for the personality to develop completely. And then the rest of that consciousness will enter completely into the new body. But before, I repeat, only the 3%, which is free. Free of what we call ego. The 97% is associated with that which in psychology is called lust, greed, Anger, envy, pride, gluttony, laziness, etc. Those elements are heavy. The essence, the consciousness is electro, electronic. While these psychological aggregates are molecular and atomic. So the personality is energetic and atomic. Having this almost the same substance of the ego. And that's why when the personality is completely developed, then the ego starts appearing in that newborn. Sometimes for years, after five years, etc. But before that, of course, still those powers of the chakras are active in the child. And that's why it is normal for the child to see phenomena in the fourth dimension, in the fifth dimension. When you have, for instance, experiences out of your body, astral projection, you know that it is easy to float or to fly in those dimensions. The child, of course, for, for the consciousness, it is, it is normal to fly, to float. That's why it still doesn't know uh, what uh, that is between the, in, the interior dimensions and the physical dimension. But little by little, uh, while he develops the personality, is uh, having that type of understanding that one thing is the physical world and another is the internal world. Because the personality also needs to learn about that. And that's why exists the other type or the other factor which is phenotype, which is education. But we hold here <coughs> that the development of the personality and the physical body from the zero to the seven years of childhood is associated with the motor instinctual sexual center of brain and with the thymus gland. And the thymus gland associated with the moon, which is the mechanicity, then, of course, the child learns through example. Not by the precept. What he sees, he repeats mechanically. This is the necessity, the necessity of, of parents to behave, to talk in the right way from uh, in that uh, age, in that uh, infancy, in order for children to learn properly what they need to learn. Unfortunately, in this day and age, there exists uh, different types of uh, systems in which children are being taught in a very wrong way only that which is related 
with the materialistic world. And that age is precisely what ancient people were teaching to their children. Everything related with mythology, with fairy tales that for them were so natural. Because that essence, that scarab that we are studying here, evolved, came from the inferior kingdoms of nature before entering into the human kingdom. It is stated that the human soul has to have 108 physical bodies in order to shape itself and to receive all the influences of the 12 constellations in different lives. We have above Malkut, according to the tree of life, Nine sephirot. Nine heavens. If you multiply those nine heavens by the twelve constellations that we always enter in in different lives and then we have the sum of 108 lives that we need in order to get around it, in order to form ourselves, to shape to have the elements that we need in order to create the microcosmo. But before entering into the human kingdom, <coughs> that embryo of soul was evolving in the animal kingdom, was having animal bodies. And before, in the plant kingdom, that soul was having physical bodies of plants or creating, according to the laws of nature, bodies of plants. And before that, in the mineral kingdom. So this is how evolution has to be studied. Not only associated with the physical world, but also with the mind and with the spirit. Because we are talking here about only the, uh, about the soul. But that soul has to create those uh, vehicles or that mind, we will say, it, that is uh, indispensable for us to have or for that soul to have. Because uh, in the kingdoms of nature, you only see the physical matter. You see minerals, you see plants, you see animals, you see people. But in the interior dimensions of people, you find mind, emotions. You know very well that you have mind and emotion. When you enter and clairvoyantly study that mind and emotion, you discover there are protoplasmic bodies or we will call it lunar bodies, that nature gives in order for you to express in all the dimensions. Because the physical body is not enough. Physical body only serves us in order to act in this three-dimensional world. But when the physical body dies, because you know, there is a law here that everything that grows and and gets uh, uh, mature and gives his fruits, eventually dies. Plants die, animals die, we die, minerals also die. So after death, we have to exist as souls with certain vehicles in order to be in this nature. And that's precisely what we study as the protoplasmic bodies which are lunar bodies related with mind and emotion that any soul in the kingdom possess. The difference is that when we enter into this human kingdom, the mind acquires intellect, 
we are at the top of the peak of evolution. But in the mineral kingdom, of course, those protoplasmic bodies are very, uh, we will say, uh, primitive. Not fully developed, like we have it already, fully developed. And those protoplasmic bodies is a gift also, which the moon gives. As we are explaining here, in relation with the scar, the zikara. So when we lose the physical body, we enter into the interior dimensions of nature. And we exist there. Those interior dimensions is what people call the dimension of dreams. Where people want to go there with astral projection. When we actually project into those dimensions, we go with our protoplasmic bodies. Or with the astral body. But that's another thing. We are talking here, there's only the mechanical bodies that anybody has. So, in the fourth dimension, which is precisely Yesod, because the fourth dimension is time, as a dimensional aspect. In that dimension is where we find the ethereal world, or what the Bible calls Eden. Eden is not a physical garden that existed in ancient times, as people think. Eden itself is a fourth dimension that is still exists, is there. When you were children, you remember that your dreams were more vivid it is because we were entering into those dimensions while the physical body was sleeping, naturally. I myself remember very well how I entered into Eden, or into the fourth dimension, into that paradise, while my physical body was sleeping. When I was, or when my physical body was a baby. And in that dimension, I saw and I found the souls, which are not human souls, or which are not having human bodies yet, but souls of animals, plants, and minerals. What entails people call fairies, gnomes, pygmies, undines, nereids, all of that exists in the fourth dimension. And it's naturally for any child to associate her or himself with that world. Enters and lives, and that's why the essence is happy, innocent. Why do, don't we see that anymore? Because last Anger, pride, greed, gluttony, laziness, anger do not belong to the fourth dimension. That belongs to the fifth. That's what we call limbo. Because the ego is molecular and atomic. And the essence is electronic. So the electronic world associates, harmonizes with the Esod. The monad, which we call the spirit, associates with the Esod. And it's a wonderful dimension, which is very uh, clear for any soul at that age. But with the development of personality and the false education that we receive and the paratype, which is the other factor for the personality, which are the circumstances in which we live, and the different examples that we learn during life, that make of 
transform that personality in something very materialistic. If you see the personality, the energetic and atomic personality of anybody in this world, is made according to this society. People that think only in uh, making money, personality that wants money, money, in order to be famous. Personalities in this world that are uh, shape and form in kindergarten, colleges, high school, universities, are personalities which are formed in order to confront a society which is materialistic. It is uh, very sad to see, for instance, uh, in the news or in many shows in TV, how materialistic people, atheists, that don't believe in God, to take out that from education because they uh, think that that is just utopia. Is something that people imagine that they don't know, really. Because they don't see it. It's due to the fact that the ego doesn't belong to that uh, dimension. The ego, the personality that we have, is associated with clipoth. With the lower dimensions of the tree of life. The infra dimensions, the evolving forces, which are controlled by the moon. This material world is very heavy, but the infra dimensions, clipoth, are heavier than the physical dimension. In clipoth, you don't find elementals. You don't find the beauty that you find in Jesod. Little by little, the child, mechanically, is absorbing the negative influence of the moon. Because in this universe, we have to learn that everything is double. has two polarities, positive and negative. The positive ray of the moon starts working in the thymus gland in the physical body, in the soul, from the zero to the seven years. So the child is vibrating, and the soul has an opportunity to grow, to develop at that age. But unfortunately, the personality of adults intervene and start teaching to their children how to survive in this life. As souls, as beings, we have to resolve or to solve an equation. That de- equation is divided in two. The first half of the equation is to survive in this physical world. To have a career, because we need shelter, we need money to eat, we need cloth, clothing, we need uh, food, and money is of course the way in which we get all of that. So therefore that first part of the equation, or the half of that equation, Everybody is concerned with that. And we know that it's necessary to have a career in order to survive in this jungle of cement and steel. But nobody cares about the second aspect of that equation, which is related with what we're talking here, the development of the soul in relation with the universe. Because there is a purpose of coming here in this physical world. It is just to make money or to live like any animal, have children and then have to die. Anybody can do that. Anybody can come here and make a lot of money to be a millionaire. Yes, it's enough to fight and to concentrate that in order to make money. There are people that triumph in that. 
But to make the second equation is the most difficult matter. That is not easy. You can be a billionaire and have nothing about the second equation. You die and you enter the, the internal worlds and you go to clip path. Because you didn't do anything in relation with the second equation, the second aspect of that equation. Those individuals which are concerned with this second aspect of the equation are the ones that enters and develop and recognize that in this life it is necessary, of course, to have a career, to have money, because we, have, we need to survive, but we don't identify with it. We know that this is just something that anybody can have if uh, makes the effort of having it. And we start working by developing the soul. But unfortunately, that development of the consciousness of the soul, of the scarab, doesn't come mechanically. It doesn't come because you are listening to this lecture, or because you will, you will listen to hundreds of these lectures, or you will read all the books of Gnosis, or you will read all the books of sacred religions. You can memorize that. We observe, for instance, uh, in this day and age, a lot of preachers of different religions that memorize the Bible and repeat chapters and verses very fast, sometimes with periods and semicolons. But when you observe, if they develop the second equation, they have nothing, none, zero. Because it has nothing to do with believing in anything. It's something that we have to work within, to exercise. And this is something that you learn in, in this doctrine. You have to ex ex exercise the consciousness. And for that, of course, a previous lecture, we explained that very clear. But the negative aspect of the moon is related with two spheres which Kabbalah call Lilith and Nahemah. Lilith is the black moon, and Nahemah is led with the white moon. But the mechanicity in which nature utilizes only for its mechanical or her mechanical purposes. At physical, we transform energies. And the internal bodies, the protoplasmic bodies that nature gives us free, also serve as nature as uh, channelers of forces that it needs in order to survive, in order for the planet to be alive. In nature, if some uh, physical bodies die, whether it are plants, animals, or humans, it doesn't matter. It creates new ones in order to keep with that mechanicity. And what people in this day and age screams and wonders how come a hurricane kills this, a tsunami kills or, or thousands and thousands of people. And why nature is doing that? Because nature is nature. It's a mechan mechanicity. To have uh, thousands of human bodies in this area or in the other area, it doesn't matter. Because matter transforms into energy, energy into matter. Nothing is destroyed. The soul is immortal. But the bodies got to be destroyed. New bodies can, can, can be acquired. But the spheres of Klippoth are governed by two great spheres, which is Lilith and Nahema, lunar forces, in which people are identified with the mechanicity of nature. It is stated that the people from Lilith abuse of their sexual organs, commit sexual abuse, homosexuality, lesbianism, incest, and all of those uh, degenerations in relation with sex belong to Lilith, the black moon. Those people, of course, atrophy their thymus gland completely. 
The other sphere of Nahema, adultery, prostitution, is very common. In Lilith and Nahema, those infra dimensions related with Klippath, fornication, adultery, and any sexual abuse is a law. When you enter into the infra dimensions of nature in Klippath, into what people call hell or inferno, that is very natural. Nobody scandals for fornication or adultery. They tossed in the third sphere of hell. They tossed to adultery in the bars, taverns. They are slaves of the mechanicity of the moon. Why? Because the protoplasmic bodies that were evolved in in the fourth dimension in the elementals when enter finally into this human level start to devolve. You see, it is precisely the beautiful symbol of the crab. You see how the crabs come from the very bottom of the ocean, from the abyss of the ocean, out in order to place their eggs outside in the earth. That's why the commental related with it. Millions of crabs coming out of the ocean, going into a certain spot or certain island or land. And after they do what they have to do, they go back to the abyss. They go back into the ocean. But behold how the crab walks backwards or sideways, right? They don't, the crowd doesn't walk ahead. They walk like, like that, behind, behind, until entering into the ocean, going into the abyss again. This is precisely the beautiful symbol of cancer. Which, by the way, is the constellation that has that, or bring the, that karma into the earth. That cancro. This is how we call it in Gnosticism. That virus of cancer. The cancro brings to the earth because of the abuse of sex. Cancer enters into the organism because of the abuse of sex in the sphere of Lilith and Nahema. It's a karmic sickness which has different branches, as you know. And then there, uh, the, the scarab, the crab, that soul, begins going backwards. You see, the moon took that embryo of soul that scar from the mineral plant animal and human evolve now in a human level that crab start walking backwards and going into animal plant and mineral that's precisely going into the abyss assuming in the protoplasmic bodies, animal shape, plant shape, mineral shape, until those protoplasmic bodies are disintegrated, completely disintegrated. Do you hear that we have to die physically? Everybody knows that. If we take the physical body after it's getting old and, and died, it goes into... Uh, the grave and disintegrates, become dust. Everybody knows that. But do you ever inquire that also those internal things that we have within, which we call mind and emotion, also have to die? But that is not matter, it's not physical matter. It is protoplasmic matter. And that's why people, when they go to bed physically and go out of their bodies, they feel like they are alive and experiencing this and that. And when they awake, they say, oh, I thought it was physical, but I was dreaming. It is because the protoplasmic bodies are matter, more, more subtle. And those bodies are submitted to other lusts. 
Those bodies are not submitted to the law of this three-dimensional world. Submitted to the infra-dimensions, to the laws of the mechanicity of the moon. And uh, as they were created in the very bottom of the night sphere, which is the center of the earth, and emerge in the Edenic world, evolving from the mineral, plant, animal, and human, also they had to de-evolve, disintegrate. They had to die. Because it's a law in nature. Everything that is born has to die. Nothing is immortal in nature. This is the law. The law. The reciprocal law in which everything grows up and dies. Physically or molecularly. Atomically. So when somebody ends with his under and eight lives, it's finished, the evolving process. And it started the evolving process. And enters with his protoplasmic bodies into the infra dimensions where they had to die. Protoplasmically speaking, had to descend in each sphere until reaching the center of the earth where the protoplasmic bodies die. And of course, the essence is trapped within it. That's why they say that the souls uh, uh, enter into hell. We can avoid that. But for that, we have to be born again. That's what the gospel says. To be born again means to create something or bodies of vehicles that are not mechanical. Because if we begin uh, with a physical body, it is mechanical has to die. To acquire an immortal body is something very difficult. More or, le- more or else to have astral, mental, immortal bodies. For that we have to learn alchemy. But that is a matter of another lecture. I want just to emphasize in this mechanicity. And with the protoplasmatic, protoplasmatic or protoplasmic bodies eventually disintegrate. And this is what in the book of Revelation this great prophet called the second death. People wonder what the second death. The second death is the annihilation, the disintegration. The death of the protoplasmic bodies which are mind and emotion. Protoplasmic bodies that everybody uses when it's outside of the physical body, when the physical body is sleeping, the normal sleep. The protoplasmic bodies are united to the physical body by the famous silver cord, which has the name of Antakarana. So when the Antakarana cord is cut, and then the protoplasmic bodies within which the essence, the consciousness, the scalp is in the internal dimensions, remains without physical body. And that is what returns into the newborn baby, which is a new physical body, in order to build again a new personality in accordance with the time. Because each time that we are born, we build a new personality. It will be absurd if we think that we will be with the old personality of Middle Ages living in this uh, 21st century. It won't match. In this 21st century, the newborns are uh, building a personality related with technology, related with this, with computers. But imagine a Roman soldier coming into this epoch and put it in front of a computer. You won't understand what is that. Because his personality is related with Roman, with Rome, right? Or that epoch. So you follow me? What is this? mechanicity that starts from the childhood and that goes beyond what we are doing here we will say it is an intellectual retrospection because the thymus gland is related with that chakra that we call it a pulmonary chakra which is because it's in the middle of the lungs related with Subconsciousness. What is the subconsciousness? Subconsciousness is that 
consciousness that we have related with the memory. When you, for instance, start to remember what happened yesterday and before yesterday, the last week, that is called retrospection. You enter into the memories of the subconsciousness and then you say, oh, I was visiting my friend. I was in this uh, restaurant. I was doing this. I was doing that. Those images are placed in the subconsciousness. It is what is called the Akasha or the Akashic records. The Akashic records not only exist as people think outside there, also it's inside. That's called our subconsciousness. The Akasha is related with the Asad, with the waters, with the forces of the moon. And act mechanically in the protoplasmic bodies. So when you are remembering things, you are somehow utilizing the chakra of your thymus gland. And going backwards into your mind, which utilizes the brain in connection with that gland. But in the baby, in a, ch- a newborn child, that chakra is fully developed of the thymus. And the baby, through that chakra, is remembering his past life easily. He knows very well where he were, where he was in other lives, and, and, and that's why he cries. This is all, again in this hell. Why do I have to come again in this new body? Why? Who sent me here? I don't want to be here. Look, these giants, monsters. They are how they treat me. I want to eat. But they are not telepathic. They don't understand that I am hungry. So therefore I have to scream like mad. In order for them to hear and say, oh, maybe he's hungry. And sometimes they say, it's not I'm hungry, I have a stomachache. Please don't give me that breast right now. I have a stomachache. But the mother doesn't know because it's not telepathic, like the child is. The child is there, a newborn, and communicates with a cat, with a dog. He says, how come this dog, his cat, understands me and communicates with me, while my mother, my father doesn't? Or do not. They are like zombies, only thinking in money. My God, please, don't put that again in my mind, in my personality, because I lost my time in my past life. Now I want to develop inside. Because this is just a materialistic world. Very heavy. But his parents doesn't listen. Doesn't know anything about it. And they start inculcating the new baby, the new technology and everything. And finally that baby loses, loses his innocence have a new personality and the egos of past lives enter, start entering there and make uh, his life a hell. You know, Hitler was a beautiful baby, innocent baby. Mussolini was a beautiful baby too. Al Capone, when he was newborn, his mother never thought that he was going to kill and to make a big trouble in Chicago. All of us were babies and beautiful, innocent. But look at us now. Look at us now. We are really demons, devils, very evil. We can kill. Those people that uh, crashed the airplane in the Twin Towers, they were also innocent children when they were babies. Nobody thought when they were sowing that they were going to do that foolishness. But they did. When we see children, you know, in the streets, of any religion, of any race, of any color, we see how innocent they are. And we really admire them. But then we start analyzing and say, my goodness, these children will lose their innocence because of this stupidity of this society. And we'll have uh, enemies, hatred, and all of that. We have this, and, and we'll be, again, uh, members of this 
web in which we are. But when, the, I repeat, when we are babies, when we are newborn, we remember past lives. Later on, when we lose that capacity because of the personality, we need to believe in reincarnation. And if that baby enters into those religions that reincarnation is a sin, if you believe in it, he will reject it. But when he was a child, he was remembering it. Now he is uh, is rejecting it or believing in it. It will be better if that soul starts to vocalize in the vowel A, the sound of the vowel A. If you pronounce that sound and concentrate the thymus gland, you see how it vibrates. Ah, and it's the first sound that any baby does. Ah, ah, ah. Associated with the waters of sexuality, which is the M, the Mare, the Mar, the Sea. Ma. This is what the baby does. Ma, 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 and crying. The first syllable. Ma, ma. O, pa, pa. The P is forcing into the A the chakra to spin. You know? That's why the, the children pronounce those first syllables. Ma, ma, pa, pa, and all is A. The ah, 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 ah. And that develops in association with the thymus gland, the pituitary gland, clairvoyance, which means that the memories of the subconsciousness start coming into us. So the newborn baby is remembering all of that, not because he's reading a book or because the mother or the father is telling something. No, he's just seeing the images and remembering through images as you remember through images what you did yesterday. If I ask you, where, where were you yesterday? You will concentrate and see images in your subconscious. He says, I was here, I was there. Send the baby. He remembers three images in the subconscious. And that's why cries. Because he remembers the past life. was very bitter. But when God goes into those ages when he was a child, he smiles and he's happy. And goes far beyond in other reincarnations. And that's why when you develop the chakra of the lungs, the thymus gland, you don't need to believe in reincarnation. You don't need to read books about reincarnation. You just remember. Naturally. Like the baby remembers. But for that you have to conquer the lost infancy. You have to become like a baby. It is coming into my mind. Jesus of Nazareth. In order to enter into the kingdom of heaven, you have to be like children. Not like disgusting adults that only have in their mind lustful things, greed, all of that. A child is not thinking in that. Tell only wants to play and to enjoy nature. We lost that. We had to reconquer that. And then you will see that the four dimensions, other dimensions in those creatures that the ignorances laugh about are real, exist, as we exist when we are out of the body while the physical body sleeps. And then that retrospection the chakra of the thymus gland send us back into the subconsciousness. And then we remember all our past. But of course, retrospection goes beyond only remembering our past lives. As subconsciousness exists in each one of us, 
Subconsciousness also exists in Mother Nature. All the events of uh, ancient races, countries that existed in the past, exist as images in the subconsciousness of nature, or what we call the Akashic Records in the fourth dimension. They vibrate those images. We can go there and to investigate the life of any personage that we want to investigate. And then we will need to read any book in order to know how this being or how this person was when he was alive in that physical body. That is what the chakra of Thymus will give us. Because nature registers automatically everything in the past, within the fourth dimension. That is the powers of the moon. When we go beyond this physical world, then we go and inquire and discover within the Akashic record, the subconscious of nature, that before this root race was created, after the universal flood, another race existed, which people call Atlantis. And that is recorded in the Akashic records of nature, in the images of the subconscious of nature. We don't need to go into the internet or to discuss or to have an argument there in a, in a forum about Atlantis. We just go into the fourth dimension with that chakra of the thymus active and we see how Atlantis was. And before that, beyond that, then we go and we know that Atlantis is now the first root ray that existed in that continent. Because the face of the earth changes periodically as we change. Because if we see, for instance, our physical body right now, it is big. It's an adult body. But we were not that when we were children. And before being that newborn baby, we were just a fetus developing in the womb of our mother. Before being a fetus, physically speaking, we were in the testicles of our father as sperms. Or one sperm. So obviously that cell change, evolve with time, and is now what we call here, where we are here. We were sperms, physically speaking, before being what we are right now. So the same the earth. The earth was not always as we see it physically. It changed with time. And this is precisely what the scientists of this day and age do not understand. That before the earth coming out of the womb of the mother's space, it was developing within the other dimensions as a protoplasmic planet. And when we arrive to this protoplasmic planet within the fourth dimension, then we enter into the other area of Lemuria, which was half physical, half ethereal, and beyond the hyperborean race, the protoplasmic race. But in that time, the earth was not physical as we are right now. If I tell you that physically, before you being as you are right now, you were like a protoplasm in the womb of your mother, you will understand. You say, yeah, you're right. But you were in darkness. You saw the light of this physical world after you came out of the womb. Before that, you were in darkness, developing in darkness. It is the same thing that happened with the planet Earth, but developing in darkness. Within the fourth dimension, in order to appear finally in the physical dimension. This root race in which we live in are now is physical. The Atlantean civilization was physical. But the Lemurian civilization was ethereal. It became physical at the end. Because when we talk about Lemuria, then we go into the Bible and we remember Eden. 
Lemuria and Eden is the same thing. And that Eden is where humanity fell into this three-dimensional world because all the many processes that were happening at that time. Before Lemuria, humanity was made into the image of God, male-female. And that is the hyperborean race, the protoplasmic race, in other dimensions. That's why it is impossible to find ruins or uh, uh, remains of those civilizations because they were not three-dimensional. Of course, if you don't develop the inner senses of the consciousness of the soul, how are you going to discover that? Still, there are scientists there and many skeptical people that think that Atlantis didn't exist, and they argue. All this, they say, yeah, it existed, whatever. And each one of them is placing Atlantis in different places. But the reality, the truth of that, is shown to you when you developed clairvoyance in that chapter of the thymus, which allows you to enter in the soft consciousness of nature, when it's completely developed. Of course, going beyond the beginning of the creation of this planet, we enter really then into the mysteries of the moon, into the mysteries of cancer. Because the moon that is reflecting the solar light within the night was a planet in the previous cosmic day, that was alive. Later on in time, or in the future, the scientists will discover certain ruins in the moon. But we show them that that satellite had life before. Of course, now it's a dead planet. All the life of the moon reincarnated in this planet Earth. You see how this wisdom of the constellation of cancer goes? By retrospecting in time, you can go even beyond in the macrocosmos. That's the power that any true human being has. you can remember that in even the creation of this solar system because everything is recorded in the space. Everything that happens in the space leaves always an image that vibrates and that records those events. So in the past cosmic day, the moon was a planet like this and that had many civilizations. Humanity and there were also people that were struggling, like we are struggling here, in order to develop the consciousness and the spirit. But most of the people of the moon, they just were not concerned with this, so they just devolved in the infradimensions of that planet at that time. But at that time, in the past cosmic day, in a satiricism, we say that there was one being that was struggling in order to perfect himself. And he finally came and <coughs> become or became the highest initiate of that past cosmic day. His name is Jehovah or Yod Hava, as we said in Kabbalah. This being particularly controls the forces of all the moons, not only our moon, all the moons of the solar system. And lives in Eden, lives in the fourth dimension. Many people, many societies and philosophies and schools talk about Jehovah and then try to describe and to explain who is this being. Individually, Jehovah is a master of the White Lodge. In the White Lodge there are many masters. 
And Jehovah is one of them. But is the one that controls the positive ray of the moon. So Jehovah with his angels work intensely in all of this gigantic nature. The angels of Jehovah are the angels of the moon. Gabriel is one of them. Gabriel is that angel that always announces the birth, the spiritual birth, the esoteric birth of a great master through the transmutation of the forces of the moon, which are related with the sea, with the water, with Yesod. So Gabriel and his angels, which are commanded by Jehovah, are the ones that work intensely in the beginning in order to transfer the energy of the moon that was active in the past cosmic day into this present cosmic day. And it's still they are acting in the fourth dimension, dealing with what we call the tatwas of nature, the forces of nature, which are controlled by the forces of the mechanicity of the moon. Now, in Gnosticism, we learn how to control the tatwas with our will, because we want to make of us a microcosmo. The angels of Jehovah only manage the tatwas according to the law of karma. The tatwas are the forces, the vibration of the ethereal world that acts in the elements of the physical world. In the fire, in the water, in the air, and in the earth. So, everywhere there is tatwa, vibration. And this is precisely what the child, the newborn, is uh, obtaining through the thymus gland, through the vital body, from nature, tatwas, vibrations, cosmic forces, in order to create the new body. Because really the physical body is like a replica of the planet. If we study the physical body, and then we find that everything that is in the physical body is in the planet as well. It's a marvelous uh, organism. And of course, as I said, everything that we are explaining here is uh, registered within your own consciousness. You can go and vocalize the vowel A. Ah. There is a mantra, for instance, that is very, uh, that is vulgarized in many ways. And it's the mantra, Abracadabra. Ah, which opens, you know, the subconsciousness. This is a simple uh, mantra that you have to vocalize in order to activate the thymus chakra. Ah, brra, ka, da, brra. You extend the sound of every letter and that put in activity the thymus gland, the chakra of the lungs. And this is how, through abra, kadavra, you enter into the past. But beginning with your past. That's why the Master Samael on the advises that in order to activate that chakra, the subconsciousness, related with the subconsciousness, the first thing that you have to do is at the end of the day to do a retrospection of your life that you had that very day in detail. Like the crab, you have to go backwards. Walking backwards, the life that you lived that day. Then walking backwards, the life that you lived yesterday. Walking backwards in your memory with images, the life that you had the last week, the previous week, the last month, the previous month, the last year, the previous year. And likewise, as you're reaching your childhood. But it will, be, it will be very difficult to reach that date, I mean that age of childhood, 
Because from 0 to 7 is the essence, the pure essence, by vibrating there. But from after 7 ahead, the ego is acting there. And when you're doing that retrospection, you are doing it with your ego. Because your ego is there inside of you. And that's why it is necessary to combine the retrospective exercise with the annihilation of the ego, with meditation, with the techniques that we teach here. Then, you will be assisted by the angels of the moon. Then you will discover what is to be born again. That is to apply the forces of Jehovah, the Holy Spirit, in the right way. Because Jehovah represents the forces of the Holy Spirit in the sexual glands, in Yesod. And this is how you understand why Jehovah gave the commandment in Genesis from the fruit of the tree of good and evil, you shall not eat, because the day that you eat from it, you will die. It's not related with a physical tree. It's related with the sexual forces of Yesod, the sexual energies that Jehovah works and managed in the whole planet, in the mineral kingdom, plant kingdom, uh, animal and human kingdom. And that's why those that abuse of that force enter into the kingdoms, inferior kingdoms of Nahema and Lilith, which are completely the opposite of Jehovah. There is a demon that is the completely opposite of Jehovah, or we said of yod and his name is Hava Yod. You see, backwards. Or Hava Yod. Because Jehovah in Kabbalah is pronounced Hot Yod Hava or Yod Hava. But the contrary is Hava Yod. And Hava Yod is a fornicator, it's a demon of the lunar spheres that teaches Black Tantra. And Lilith and Nahema are related with the moon, with the forces of fornication that sinks the soul into Klippas, where fornication and adultery is a law. Those laws are surfacing in the planet Earth in this day and age. It is difficult to find a city now that is channeling the higher forces of Jehovah, or the moon, of Yesod, above. In this city of New York, or any city or the planet right now, the forces of Lilith and Nahema are surfacing. And adultery, fornication, homosexuality, lesbianism is a law. They want to establish in the whole planet to surface the whole clip the whole hell in the physical world. Unfortunately, that is what is happening in our beloved planet. But still, we can fight and to polarize ourselves with the higher forces of the moon. Because the inferior forces of Lilith and Nahema, the spheres of the moon, the lunar forces, are very heavy. Everywhere. Do you have questions? No. Is that the dream state? No. The dream state happens in the fifth dimension, which is called the astral world. Even though the fourth dimension has, of course, inferior and superior aspects. We are talking here about the superior aspects of the fourth dimension, which people call Eden. And that Eden of fourth dimension is where you find the paradise where you find a humanity which is not like this. People think that this humanity in the three-dimensional world is the only humanity that exists in this planet. But they are wrong. There is another humanity that exists in this planet, but it doesn't exist in the three-dimensional world. It exists in the world of Yesod, in the fourth dimension. What people call the gene lands, or the enchanted lands of Avalon. 
the promised land is the fourth dimension that the Bible talk about. That promised land where only milk and honey is poured. Milk, the symbol of the moon, is that force of the moon. The mother gives milk. And honey is also that substance that has to be transmuted. Honey, alchemically, is that substance that uh, the sexual organ of the female, the yoni, uh, gives in order to perform the sexual act. That gives the humidity to the woman. I don't remember the scientific name that the doctors or, med- or physicians give to that secretion of the sexual organs, the female sexual organs, for, in order for the woman to be prepared for the sexual act. That in, a, in alchemy is called honey. It's a female force. And the milk is also a feminine force. So milk and honey is related with the sexual forces because the breast in woman are the masculine forces, the masculine organs of the woman. While uh, their vagina is the feminine. So you see there, when the Bible talks about milk and honey, it's talking about the feminine forces of the moon related with mother nature in relation with Yesod. So if you said, in order to go into that world, it means that in the fourth dimension, nobody fornicates. Nobody uh, squander the sexual energy. All of that there transmute the sexual energy. That humanity is a heavenly humanity. Do you hear about Shangri-La or Shambhala in Tibet? That that mysterious city that people are trying to find in this three-dimensional world? Well, that city doesn't exist in the three-dimensional world. Shambhala or Shangri-La exists in the fourth dimension, in Tibet. And there is a humanity that lives there. And that humanity enjoys the elixir of longevity because they are not fornicators. They are masters, all of them. They exist in that dimension. There are many cities, not only in Tibet, here in America, that are within the fourth dimension where that humanity lives. They have powers. And they have cosmic ships which are uh, fueled with solar light. No gasoline. Because that's stupid. That pollutes the atmosphere. Destroy the life. You know that. So Jet Space is fourth dimension? We would say that the humanity in the fourth dimension lives in the genus state. Yeah, they are in genus state normally. Of course, we in this uh, school teach how can we enter into the fourth dimension in genus state to put the physical body into genus state. And that's, of course, uh, possible when we take advantage of the slumber state in combination with certain mantras and invoking certain beings that exist in that dimension and they are immortal already. There are many lands in genus state, for instance, in India. They masters there. In the Himalayas. Everywhere. In California, for instance, there is a city there in genus state which you can visit if you go in the astral plane, and if you ask, and if you deserve to go. But in this three-dimensional world, well, only demons live here. We are called Hanasmusen, double polarity. Only people which are Hanasmusen, with ego alive, live in the three-dimensional world. People that have no ego live in the fourth dimension, the promised land. Do you have another question? What are some exercises uh, that we can do to transmute the sexual energy? Is meditation simple? Meditation one of them? In order to transmute the sexual energy, we need to learn the science of pranayama. 
Prana is energy. Yama is respiration. Pranayama exercises teach how to transmute the sexual energy. <coughs> and uh, knowing that the word, the mantras, help. Certain magical words, or we will say powerful words, mantras, that exercise uh, influence in the sexual organs in order to put them to vibrate, talking about the energy, and to sublimate that sexual energy by uh, breathing exercises. We have to learn how the sexual force in Yesod, the sexual organs, are connected with the nostrils. The nostrils are connected to the testicles or the ovaries through two nervous cords, which are semi-ethereal, semi-physical, and which are uh, represented in the caduceus of Mercury with two serpents. The caduceus above is the brain, and the two serpents represent these two cords. By utilizing these two nervous cords, we transmute, or we transform, we will say, the sexual matter into energy. And as energy, the energy rises through the two cores to the brain. And this is how the energy is uh, uh, transmuted. We have uh, many books, and in the website we have a lot of uh, uh, lectures written there that teach how to perform the pranayama. If we are single... If we are married, we do the same thing in the same way, but sexually connected. And then both wife and husband take advantage of the two polarities of the moon. You know, because when we talk about Jehovah or Yod Hava here, then we apply the symbol of the name to Yesod. Yod is Adam, and Hava is Eve. So Adam and Eve, Yod, Hava, are the two polarities. That's why it is written that when Jehovah created the human being, he created male, female, as he is male, female, Yod, Hava. Yod is Adam and Hava is Eve. So by transmuting the sexual energy in the sexual contact, both Yod, Adam, and Hava, Eve, create a new creature within each one of them. That creature is not physical, but spiritual. And that's precisely what is called to be born again. Because what is flesh is flesh. Anybody can know how to create a physical body. Any animal does it without reading any book. Cat does it, dog does it, horses does it. A horse don't do it, I mean, yeah. I'm applying the singular with the plural at the same time. But you understand, I'm doing efforts here. <laughs> so, in the same way, by applying the two polarities of Adam and Eve, we create inside what the Bible calls to be born again. But not by the flesh, or by the will of any man, but by the will of God. And that God is the Holy Spirit, the force of Jehovah, that you learn to transmute. Yeah? Recreating, no. There's a mistake there. Jesus, or Samael on Bior, didn't recreate it, the astral body. Sometimes uh, certain books are wrongly translated. What happened is that when you are a newborn, again, I mean, when you are twice born, it's called in esotericism, somebody that acquires the creation of those internal bodies is called a twice born. Jesus of Nazareth is a twice born. Samael of Beor is a twice born. And any prophet that came into this world is a twice born. Mohammed, Buddha, Krishna are twice born beings, meaning that they utilize the sexual energy as the way that we are spending here and create it. An astral body, a mental body, and a causal body. 
bodies that are not mechanical, that are not submitted to the moon, to the mechanical laws of nature. Because what we explain in this lecture is how those mechanical bodies eventually die and disintegrate, as the physical body does. But in the case when we are born again, we create a spiritual astral body, a spiritual mental body, and a spiritual causal body. Then those bodies are immortal because they are solar. They are submitted to other lusts, which are beyond the world of the Asad. The astral body, for instance, in the tree of life is related with Hod. The mental body in the tree of life is related with Netzah. And the causal body in the tree of life is related with Tifereth. So when somebody creates those bodies, has the right to be called human being. Before that, is not. For respect, we can call it human being, but it's not. It's certainly just an intellectual mammal or an intellectual animal. This is it. And after creating those bodies, somebody can return into sin. Because there is the story and the legend of fallen angels. Meaning that they go back and fornicate again. They eat of the tree of good and evil. So when that happens, the energy of Job Chava, the forces of the Holy Spirit that were enlightening all the chakras on each body, descends and that individual sinks into Klippoth. And the solar bodies no longer shine. It's like a sun without light. But they can repent. And by repenting, they rise again the energy of the Holy Spirit in those internal bodies, and then those internal bodies again shine. And that is what we call the resurrection. Many souls created in past life those bodies, and now they are fallen. But those souls are the ones that knew alchemy, the new esotericism, and they created. In order to be born again, it's not a matter of believing in the Bible. There are many newborns, I mean, uh, twice-born masters that exist in the fourth dimension that never read the Bible. That they don't know anything about the New Testament. It's because they are twice-born from a long time ago. Although they achieved their second birth in other religions. Because this is not a patrimony of Christianity or Judaism or, or Islam or Buddhism. That, this is a, a, a sign that belongs to the universe, to the space. So therefore, Samael on the earth was fallen. He confessed that he fell in past, but that he, he again rose his serpents, Kundalini, the sexual forces, and then enlightened again his, uh, his bodies. And the bodies are there. Of course, you can, uh, those bodies can be disintegrated if you really follow the path of black magic, or the black lodge. Then you enter into Klippoth. There, the solar bodies can be disintegrated. But it will take time, times, and a half of a time in order to disintegrate. Another question? Well, thank you very much. And the next lecture will be the heart, Leo. Thank you very much. To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Gloria and Publishing, available from booksellers worldwide. You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you. May all beings be happy. Yeah,